Israel and Hamas Conflict in Brief by Jim Zanotti and Jeremy M. Sharp Introductory Summary On October 7, 2023, the Palestinian Sunni Islamist group Hamas, a U.S.-designated Foreign Terrorist Organization, or FTO, led surprise attacks against Israel from the Gaza Strip. The stunning nature, scope, and lethality of the attacks and apparent intelligence failures have become a subject of analysis for Israeli and U.S. officials. Iran reportedly provides material support to Hamas and, according to U.S. officials, may be complicit in a broad sense. But President Joe Biden said in October, quote, there is no evidence, end quote, that Iran helped plan the attack. In response to the October 7th attacks, Israel declared war on Hamas and launched aerial bombardment and ground operations in Gaza. Reportedly, more than 1,200 Israelis and foreign nationals, including 35 U.S. citizens in Israel, and more than 27,000 Palestinians in Gaza have been killed as of February 5th, 2024. Hamas and other groups also seized around 240 hostages on October 7th. Israel and Hamas agreed to a multi-day pause in fighting in late November. During the pause, 110 hostages held in Gaza and 250 Palestinian prisoners held by Israel were released. Hamas and others reportedly hold some 130 persons, including about six Americans. The United Nations has stated that the situation in Gaza, with an estimated 1.7 million Gazans displaced, out of a population of approximately 2.1 million people, constitutes a major humanitarian crisis, having already faced dire economic and humanitarian conditions before the conflict. Some goods are entering Gaza via Egypt and Israel, and U.S. and U.N. officials have sought to boost this aid. More than 60% of the housing units in Gaza have reportedly been destroyed or damaged. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has consistently articulated Israeli goals of securing the hostages' return and destroying Hamas's military and governing capabilities. As tens of thousands of troops have withdrawn and military operations have decreased somewhat in intensity in early 2024, Israeli leaders continue debating the level and type of military pressure to apply and the urgency of a hostage return deal. As of early January, the Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, controls some areas above ground in northern Gaza, while it engages in operations farther south in an effort to target Hamas and its top leaders. Hamas's tunnels make urban warfare more challenging. The Biden administration has stated that Israel has the right to defend itself and has resisted calls from other international actors for an indefinite ceasefire. However, U.S. leaders have urged Israel to minimize casualties and reduce the intensity of their operations, amid debate regarding how the prosecution of the conflict may affect long-term outcomes. Differences between U.S., Israeli, and Palestinian Authority officials on post-conflict security and governance for Gaza may intensify the challenges involved. U.S. officials have expressed support for a resumption of Palestinian Authority administration in Gaza after the Palestinian Authority undertakes certain reforms, as part of efforts to move toward a two-state solution. Palestinian Authority and other Arab leaders insist on progress toward a Palestinian state for them to cooperate with this transition. Netanyahu openly opposes the Palestinian Authority return to power in Gaza and has pledged to continue insisting that Israel have full security control of, quote, all territory west of the Jordan River, end quote, asserting that his stance has prevented the establishment of a Palestinian state. U.S. officials have sought to reduce risks that the conflict could expand geographically. In the West Bank, amid violence and tensions between Palestinians and Israelis that could affect stability there, the administration has imposed sanctions on some extremist Israeli settlers, delayed a firearm shipment to Israel, and made efforts to persuade Israel to ease or end measures that have precipitously decreased the revenues of the West Bank-based Palestinian Authority. Additionally, the Iran-backed Shia Islamist group Lebanese Hezbollah, another foreign terrorist organization, has exchanged fire with Israel and could create a second front at the Israel-Lebanon border. U.S. officials are reportedly seeking to help facilitate the withdrawal of Hezbollah forces from border areas to alleviate obstacles to the return of some 80,000 evacuated Israelis to their homes in the north. Israeli officials have threatened possible military action if the issue is not resolved diplomatically. 
As of early February, post-October 7th attacks by the Iran-supported Houthi militia in Yemen, targeting commercial vessels transiting the Bab al-Mandab Strait in the Red Sea, and by Iran-allied groups in Iraq and Syria, targeting U.S. forces in both countries and Jordan, have triggered strikes against these groups by the U.S. military. In an October 2023 supplemental budget request, President Biden asked Congress to appropriate more than $14 billion in Israel-related funding and more than $9 billion in global humanitarian assistance amounts that could partly be allocated for Gaza, the West Bank, and Israel. Members of Congress have expressed differing views on the request and its various elements, with bills introduced in early February in both the House and the Senate. End of introductory summary. Read by Elsie Selwyn. Section 1 of Israel and Hamas Conflict in Brief by Jim Zanotti and Jeremy M. Sharp. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Conflict Overview Initial Attacks, Ongoing Conflict, and Humanitarian Crisis on October 7, 2023, the Palestinian Sunni Islamist group Hamas, a U.S.-designated Foreign Terrorist Organization, or FTO, led a series of surprise attacks from the Gaza Strip against Israel, see Figure 1. Palestine Islamic Jihad, or PIJ, another FTO, claimed that its forces also participated in the attacks, and other militants outside of Hamas and PIJ may also have joined. The assault targeted Israeli military bases and civilian areas during the final Jewish High Holiday. The October 7th attacks, scope, and lethality had no precedent in the 16 years since Hamas seized control of Gaza. The nature of the violence stunned Israelis and many others, and includes allegations of sexual violence. The apparent intelligence and operational failures in preventing the assault or limiting its impact have become a subject of debate in Israel and elsewhere. Some analysts have said that Israel may have missed signals, over-relied on technological solutions, and or misread Hamas's intentions. Whether or not Iran had a role in the attack remains a question. Iran reportedly provides material support to Hamas, and according to U.S. officials may be complicit in a broad sense, but President Joe Biden said in October, quote, there is no evidence, end quote, that Iran helped plan the attack. In response to the attacks, Israel's cabinet declared war on Hamas, and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu formed an emergency unity government with an opposition party. Israel also initially halted supplies from Israeli territory to Gaza of electricity, food, and fuel. Since the outbreak of conflict, Israel and Egypt, via consultations with U.S. and U.N. officials, have coordinated the use of Egypt's Rafah crossing with Gaza, and later also Israel's Karim Shalom crossing, to bring some international aid into the territory in a way that seeks to prevent diversion by Hamas. Israel's military mobilized hundreds of thousands of troops, has bombarded targets in Gaza from the air, and undertaken ground operations as well. About 1.7 million of Gaza's roughly 2.1 million people have been displaced from their homes, some multiple times, and most face profound humanitarian challenges, discussed below. At various points in the conflict, Hamas and other Gaza-based militants have fired rockets indiscriminately into Israel. As of early February, the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, controls some areas above ground in northern Gaza, while it engages in operations farther south in an effort to target Hamas and its top leaders, including in Hamas's vast network of tunnels. Reportedly, as of February 5, 2024, more than 1,200 Israelis and foreign nationals, including 35 U.S. citizens in Israel, and more than 27,000 Palestinians in Gaza had been killed, and over 60% of Gaza's housing units have been destroyed or damaged. Hamas and other groups reportedly seized around 240 Israeli and foreign national hostages on October 7th, including some Americans. Recovering hostages has been a major Israeli and U.S. concern. Qatar, Egypt, and the United States facilitated a multi-day pause in fighting between Israel and Hamas in the final week of November. During the pause, 110 hostages held in Gaza, including two U.S.-Israeli dual citizens, 
and 250 Palestinian prisoners held by Israel were released. Hamas and other groups reportedly still hold around 130 persons in Gaza, including about six Americans, but reports suggest that some of these hostages could be dead. The conflict's impact on civilians has generated a humanitarian crisis. As of early February, UN and World Health Organization officials have raised many public health concerns associated with overcrowding, acute water, food, and fuel shortages, poor sanitation, and challenges to hospitals' safety and functionality. Observers debate how to apportion blame between Israel and Hamas for dangers to civilians and the worsening of already dire humanitarian conditions in Gaza. While those faulting Israel argue that Israeli actions have inflicted casualties and limited life-sustaining supplies, those blaming Hamas assert that Hamas personnel in Gaza and other militants reportedly contribute to making civilian areas and facilities unsafe by operating in or near them. Areas of Possible Conflict Expansion Since the October 7th attacks, significant U.S. and international attention has focused on the extent to which conflict might expand in other areas of the region. West Bank Tensions and violence have continued between Palestinians and Israelis. West Bank-based officials from the Palestinian Authority slash Palestine Liberation Organization appear to be in a difficult position. While they do not endorse Hamas, they have refrained from publicly condemning it, perhaps because of a perceived spike in West Bank Palestinian support for Hamas that may stem from Hamas's military actions, the prisoner releases it has secured, and civilian suffering in Gaza. U.S. officials and lawmakers have signaled concerns related to Israeli actions in the West Bank that may affect stable living conditions for Palestinians. The administration has imposed visa bans on some extremist Israeli settlers, delayed a firearm shipment to Israel, and has called on Israel to ease or end measures that have precipitously decreased Palestinian Authority revenues since October 7th. Additionally, in early February, President Biden issued an executive order authorizing, quote, financial sanctions against those directing or participating in certain actions including acts or threats of violence against civilians, intimidating civilians to cause them to leave their homes, destroying or seizing property, or engaging in terrorist activity in the West Bank, end quote, and impose sanctions on four individuals. Iran-backed actors elsewhere. Iran supports several non-state actors across the Middle East and armed groups in Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen expressing support for the October 7th attacks have attacked Israeli or U.S. positions. Israel has exchanged fire with the Shia Islamist group Lebanese Hezbollah, a foreign terrorist organization, and Palestinian militants across Israel's northern border with Lebanon. If these clashes escalate, Hezbollah's arsenal of some 150,000 missiles and rockets could pose a grave threat to Israeli strategic sites and population centers. U.S. officials are reportedly seeking to broker a withdrawal of Hezbollah forces from border areas to facilitate the return of an estimated 80,000 evacuated Israelis to their homes in the north. Israeli officials have threatened wider military action to address the issue absent a diplomatic resolution. As of early 2024, post-October 7th attacks by the Houthi militia in Yemen have targeted shipping lanes that transit the Bab al-Mandab Strait, significantly disrupting maritime trade and triggering military responses from U.S. and United Kingdom forces. Groups in Iraq and Syria have attacked U.S. forces stationed in the region over 160 times, including a January 29th drone attack in Jordan that killed three U.S. soldiers and injured more than 40. In early February, U.S. forces conducted additional retaliatory strikes against Iranian and Iran-backed forces in Iraq and Syria. Political Developments Israel Israel's war management cabinet includes key opposition figure Benny Gantz, a former defense minister and chief IDF commander, alongside Prime Minister Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. Netanyahu has consistently articulated Israeli goals of securing the hostages' return and destroying Hamas's military and governing capabilities. As tens of thousands of troops have withdrawn and military operations have decreased somewhat in intensity in early 2024, 
Israeli leaders have debated how to proceed. Reportedly, Netanyahu, Gallant, and top military commanders refused to leave Hamas in control of Gaza and argued that continued military pressure, perhaps for a year or more, may be necessary to obtain hostages' release. Apparently, Gantz and some non-voting observers in the war cabinet have expressed support for getting hostages released urgently, given the dangers they face, even if it requires a lengthy ceasefire. Some analysts have questioned, quote, whether Hamas can be toppled as Gaza's governing and military power under the existing strategy, end quote. While the IDF estimates that some 10,000 out of 30,000 Hamas fighters have been killed, Hamas's unconventional tactics and tunnel network have helped its resilience and allowed its most senior leaders to elude Israel. Netanyahu has reportedly said that Israel might accept their expulsion rather than their killing or capture. As of early February, negotiations are reportedly ongoing for a proposed hostage prisoner exchange that could pause the fighting for several weeks or more. Israeli officials are apparently debating the specifics of the proposed exchange and how it might affect Israeli military operations, while Hamas may be bargaining for a cessation of hostilities. Arab States Popular sentiment has placed pressure on Arab governments to oppose Israeli actions in Gaza, even though many Arab leaders might welcome an end to Hamas rule there. Together with other members of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Arab countries have called for an end to, quote, Israeli aggression against the Gaza Strip, end quote, more humanitarian aid, and a freeze on international arms exports to Israel. International Organizations on November 15th, the UN Security Council adopted Resolution 2712, which called for, quote, urgent and extended humanitarian pauses, end quote, and the, quote, immediate and unconditional release of all hostages held by Hamas and other groups, end quote, and urged all parties to refrain from depriving civilians in Gaza of, quote, basic services and humanitarian assistance indispensable to their survival, end quote. On December 22nd, the Security Council adopted Resolution 2720, which called for, quote, urgent steps to immediately allow safe, unhindered, and expanded humanitarian access, and to create the conditions for a sustainable cessation of hostilities, end quote. The United States abstained from both resolutions. On January 26th, the International Court of Justice found that it had jurisdiction over allegations by South Africa that Israel may have committed acts of genocide and ordered Israel, among other provisional measures, to prevent the commission of or incitement to genocide, to, quote, enable the provision of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance, end quote, to Palestinians in Gaza, and to report on its compliance with the court's order one month later. End of section one, read by Elsie Selwyn. Section 2 of Israel and Hamas Conflict in Brief by Jim Zanotti and Jeremy M. Sharp. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. U.S. Policy Israeli Military Operations The U.S. government has stated its support for military operations by Israel to defend itself in line with international law, including in Gaza. President Biden, Secretary of State Blinken, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, and other administration officials have visited Israel and other countries in the region since the outbreak of conflict. U.S. officials have publicly opposed calls for an indefinite ceasefire, citing Israel's right to defend itself. Nevertheless, U.S. officials have voiced support for humanitarian pauses and additional hostage prisoner exchanges. While President Biden appears to broadly support Israel's stated objectives of ending Hamas rule in Gaza, he and administration officials have sought to convince their Israeli counterparts to take steps to minimize casualties, reduce the intensity of their operations, and step up humanitarian aid. In early January, a National Security Council spokesperson said the Israeli goal of degrading Hamas's ability to carry out attacks inside Israel is attainable, but it is unlikely that Israel can eliminate the group and its ideology. Potential Post-Conflict Scenarios 
the administration has been conferring with israeli and palestinian authority officials on security and governance for gaza after conflict ends or abates tensions between supporting domestically legitimate palestinian self-rule and safeguarding israel's capacity to monitor and stifle potential threats may intensify the challenges involved in november president biden articulated the following principles quote, to start gaza must never again be used as a platform for terrorism there must be no forcible displacement of palestinians from gaza no reoccupation no siege or blockade and no reduction in territory as we strive for peace gaza and the west bank should be reunited under a single governance structure ultimately under a revitalized palestinian authority as we all work toward a two-state solution the international community must commit resources to support the people of gaza in the immediate aftermath of this crisis including interim security measures and establish a reconstruction mechanism to sustainably meet gaza's long-term needs end quote palestinian authority president mahmoud abbas has indicated that the palestinian authority would only govern gaza which hamas forcibly seized from the palestinian authority in two thousand seven in the context of significant progress toward establishing a palestinian state in the west bank and gaza with a capital in east jerusalem secretary blinken has indicated that such progress is unlikely to be easy or quote, happen overnight end quote and reportedly has tasked the State Department to evaluate options for implementing a two-state solution with U.S. recognition of a Palestinian state as one possibility, quote, in a way that assures security for Israel, end quote. U.S. and Palestinian Authority officials have reportedly discussed possible mechanisms for improving Palestinian Authority leadership and domestic legitimacy, some leading palestinian figures argue that the palestinian authority cannot be strengthened via reforms without israel granting it greater control over its revenues and security prime minister netanyahu has insisted that only israel can demilitarize gaza and openly opposes the palestinian authority returning purportedly because of rhetorical and financial support he argues the palestinian authority provides for terrorism in january after president biden reiterated his commitment to an eventual two-state solution netanyahu pledged to continue insisting that israel have full security control of quote, all territory west of the jordan river end quote, and said that this stance has prevented the establishment of a palestinian state netanyahu may calculate that opposition to a two-state solution and palestinian authority rule of gaza might rally domestic support for him and the ultra-nationalist figures in his government the significant dip in Netanyahu's public approval ratings since the October 7th attack could lead to his government's collapse and new Knesset elections sometime in 2024. Prospects for any Hamas role in post-conflict Palestinian Authority governance, which some leading Palestinian Authority figures appear to be discussing, would likely encounter U.S. and Israeli opposition major u s policy issues related to post conflict scenarios in gaza would include the following resolving potential differences between u s israeli and palestinian authority officials it is unclear whether or not the parties can move from the starting points discussed above to compromises on aspects of post conflict governance and security role of palestinian authority security forces Reportedly, quote, U.S. and Palestinian officials have discussed a plan to retrain 1,000 former Palestinian Authority security forces officers in Gaza and a further 3,000 to 5,000 in the West Bank who would work in Gaza after the war, end quote, with training presumably under the auspices of the U.S. Security Coordinator for Israel and the Palestinian Authority, USST. Arab States' his Role Egypt, Jordan, and Arab Gulf states may be reluctant to help transition Gaza by contributing troops, advisors, or funding toward Palestinian Authority self-rule or help with reconstruction, if doing so might be perceived domestically and internationally as enabling indefinite Israeli occupation. Thus, Arab state participation may depend on diplomatic progress toward Palestinian statehood. U.S. Military Deployments since October 7th, President Biden has positioned additional U.S. military assets and personnel to the Middle East in an apparent effort to support Israel and Arab partners, deter Iran and Iranian-supported groups from widening the war, and prepare for contingencies such as an evacuation of U.S. citizens. As of early February 2024, the guided missile destroyers USS Kearney and USS Gravely were positioned in the Gulf of Aden and Red Sea, 
where U.S. warships have been regularly intercepting Houthi missiles. The USS Dwight D. Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group was positioned in the Red Sea, and the USS Bataan Amphibious Ready Group ARG was positioned in the eastern Mediterranean. U.S. Expedited Arms Deliveries to Israel since October 7th, the Biden administration has expedited the provision of U.S. military and security assistance to Israel. As of late January 2024, one report indicated that since October 7th, the United States has dispatched 280 transport planes and 40 ships to deliver 25,000 tons of armaments and equipment to Israel. The same report noted that due to global shortages in certain types of armaments, the Israeli government had postponed certain defense export contracts in order to redirect resources for domestic combat operations. Emergency Arms Sale to Israel In December, the Biden administration notified Congress of proposed sales to Israel of tank cartridges, $106.5 million on December 8th, and artillery shells, $147.5 million on December 29th. In both instances, the administration said it was invoking emergency authorities codified in the Arms Export Control Act, 22 U.S.C. 2776, that allow the president to waive congressional review of an arms sale if the president states in a formal notification to Congress that, quote, an emergency exists, end quote, requiring an immediate sale, quote, in the national security interests of the United States, end quote. According to the Department of Defense, DOD, both sales will be from U.S. Army inventory or U.S. Army stock, a possible reference to the U.S. maintained stockpile in Israel, known as War Reserve Stocks for Allies Israel, WRSA-I. Amendments to the authorization of WRSA-I in a Senate-introduced version of the Supplemental Appropriations Bill for Israel, see below, would waive congressional notification of sales to Israel from WRSA-I by replacing 30-day congressional notification with, quote, or as far in advance of such transfer as is practicable as determined by the president on a case-by-case -case basis during extraordinary circumstances impacting the national security of the United States, end quote. The House version of a supplemental appropriations bill would shorten congressional review to 15 days. Several members of Congress have objected to the administration's use of emergency authority to bypass congressional review. Possible New U.S. Sales of Combat Aircraft to Israel In January 2024, sources reported that the United States and Israel are in the process of finalizing up to three different sales of fixed-wing, 25F-35Is and 25F-15IAs, and rotary-wing aircraft, 12 Apache helicopters, to Israel. While the delivery of such items are likely years away, reports also note that Israel has been, quote, accelerating acquisition of various kinds of aerial munitions, end quote, worth, quote, hundreds of millions of dollars, end quote. Humanitarian Assistance for Palestinians During President Biden's October 18th visit to Israel, he announced $100 million in U.S. humanitarian assistance for Gaza and the West Bank to, quote, help support over a million displaced and conflict-affected people with clean water, food, hygiene support, medical care, and other essential needs, end quote, via, quote, trusted partners including UN agencies and international NGOs, end quote. According to the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, for fiscal year 2024, as of mid-January, USAID's Bureau of Humanitarian Assistance had committed $43.3 million in assistance for Gaza and the West Bank. And the Department of State's Bureau of Population, Refugees, and Migration had committed $51 million for Gaza and the West Bank via the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, UNRWA, and $18.2 million for the region via another implementing partner. The Department of State has announced a temporary pause in unobligated U.S. funding to UNRWA pending further review of allegations that 12 UNRWA employees were involved in the October 7th attacks. Some lawmakers have sponsored legislation or written letters calling for a halt to humanitarian aid in Gaza and or greater monitoring of whether or not any U.S. assistance to Gaza and the West Bank may previously have been diverted or be at risk of future diversion by Hamas or other groups. 
Other lawmakers have called for additional humanitarian aid for the Palestinians. Also, lawmakers are debating the extent to which UNRWA or alternative implementing partners can provide humanitarian assistance while limiting the risks of misconduct. Supplemental Appropriations Legislation In an October 19th Oval Office speech, President Biden announced an emergency supplemental budget request to support U.S. partners, including Ukraine, Israel, and others, and address other domestic and global issues. In sum, the president seeks over $14 billion in Israel-related funding. For over three months, the House and Senate have considered respective versions of supplemental appropriations legislation, focused not just on Israel, but other foreign policy and domestic matters as well, such as assistance to Ukraine and Taiwan and reforming U.S. border and tax policies. In early February 2024, leadership in both the House and Senate announced revised supplemental appropriations legislation. On February 3rd, House leaders released a base text, House Resolution 7217, which would provide the full amount requested by the President with additional defense funds for artillery and munitions, while adding $2.5 billion in fiscal year presidential drawdown authority, 22 U.S. Code 2318A1, for Israel, which, quote, shall not take effect, end quote, unless the Secretary of State determines and reports to Congress that the exercise of such authority is in response to the situation in Israel. The bill also would provide $3.3 billion in defense funds to the Department of Defense, DOD, for ongoing operations in the U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, area of operations. President Biden has said he would veto the standalone Israel aid bill. A day later, Senate leaders introduced a revised bill. The original Senate supplemental had been introduced in early December as Senate Amendment 1371 to House Resolution 815, appropriating a total of $118.3 billion for a range of foreign and domestic issues. The bill has been introduced as a new substitute amendment to House Resolution 815. Among other things, this bill would provide $14.1 billion in Israel-related supplemental appropriations, including $4.4 billion for DOD's response to the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza and related expenses, $801.4 million for U.S. Army ammunition procurement to respond to the situation in Israel, $4 billion in DOD funding for Iron Dome and David's Sling defense systems, $3.5 billion in Foreign Military Financing, FMF, $769.3 million of which is specified for offshore procurement, OSP, though that figure, quote, may be exceeded if agreed by the United States and Israel following consultation with the Committees on Appropriations, end quote. The Senate bill would also authorize the Secretary of State to waive congressional notification on the foreign military financing funds provided in the bill, quote, if the Secretary of State determines that to do so is in the national security interest of the United States, end quote. $1.2 billion in DOD funding for the iron beam laser-based defense system being developed by Israel, and $100 million to the Department of State for worldwide security protection and the response to the situation in Israel. In addition, the revised Senate bill, like its House counterpart in the President's request, also includes proposed provisions that would amend the Department of Defense Appropriations Act 2005, Public Law 108-287, Section 12001 to permit the transfer of previously prohibited categories of defense articles to the government of Israel, and temporarily waive limitations on the total value of defense stockpiles located in Israel and set aside for Israel's use, per 22 United States Code Section 2321HB. As previously mentioned, the House bill would shorten the congressional review period for such transfers to 15 days. The Senate introduced bill specifies that congressional review take place, quote, as far in advance of such transfer as is practicable as determined by the president on a case-by-case -case basis during extraordinary circumstances impacting the national security of the United States, end quote. There are several other differences between the House and Senate introduced Israel-related supplemental appropriations bills. The Senate bill authorizes $7.8 billion in presidential drawdown authority for fiscal year 2024 without specifying a foreign recipient. 
In addition to providing Israel-related funds, the Senate introduced bill would match the president's request by appropriating over $9 billion via global humanitarian accounts that could be partly allocated to address the needs of those affected by the crisis in Gaza and Israel, including in neighboring countries, $5.65 billion in International Disaster Assistance, IDA, and $3.495 billion in Migration and Refugee Assistance, MRA. The House bill does not include these funds. The House introduced bill would mandate a report describing all security assistance provided to Israel since the October 7th attacks. The Senate introduced bill would not. The Senate introduced bill includes $85 million in additional appropriations for other entities, including $75 million in International Narcotics Control and Law Enforcement, INCLE, funding for assistance to the Middle East and $10 million in peacekeeping operations, PKO, for a U.S. contribution to the Multinational Force and Observers Mission in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula to enhance force protection capabilities. Finally, the Senate introduced bill would provide $2.44 billion to replace combat expenditures for weapons in the Red Sea and CENTCOM's other areas of operations. Since the Senate introduced bill includes global humanitarian assistance funds, some of which may be used to support the Palestinians, appropriators added new restrictions in the February 2024 revised bill explicitly prohibiting funds, notwithstanding any other provision of law appropriated in the bill and prior acts, for contributions to UNRWA. The bill also requires the Secretary of State to certify and report to Congress, no later than March 1, 2024, on U.S. oversight policies and procedures for monitoring assistance in Gaza. Possible Senate Amendments to the Supplemental Appropriations Bill for Israel since the initial release of the Senate Draft Supplemental Appropriations Bill in December 2023, several senators have announced amendments, some of which may be reintroduced as the Senate considers its latest bill. On December 7, 13 senators, currently 18 co-sponsors, published a discussion draft of an amendment to House Resolution 815 that would 1 require that weapons received by any country under this bill are used in accordance with U.S. law, international humanitarian law, and the law of armed conflict, two, require that per existing law, section 620IA of the Foreign Assistance Act, the President obtain assurances that any country receiving weapons via this bill cooperate fully with U.S.-supported efforts to provide humanitarian assistance to those in need, and three, require that the President report to the Congress within 30 days on whether each country receiving U.S. security assistance through this bill is, among other things, using U.S.-funded military equipment in accordance with their intended purposes. In January 2024, Senator Tim Kaine announced that he had filed an amendment to, quote, strike a provision in the proposed National Security Supplemental Funding Bill that waives oversight requirements for U.S. funding for Israel under the Foreign Military Financing Program, end quote. Senator Schatz also has announced that he is planning to file an amendment with 48 co-sponsors, reaffirming U.S. support for a, quote, negotiated, comprehensive solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict resulting in two states with Israelis and Palestinians living side by side in peace, security, dignity, and mutual recognition, end quote. End of section two, read by Elsie Selwyn. Section three of Israel and Hamas Conflict in Brief by Jim Zanotti and Jeremy M. Sharp. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Possible options for Congress. Additional U.S. Assistance for Israel and Possible Conditions Lawmakers may consider whether to increase, maintain, decrease, or condition existing U.S. support for Israel. In December 2023, Senator Bernie Sanders introduced Senate Resolution 504, a privileged resolution, which would have mandated that the State Department provide Congress with information on Israel's human rights practices within 30 days of passage, pursuant to Section 502B-C of the Foreign Assistance Act of 1961. After receiving the report, Congress, by joint resolution, may act to terminate, restrict, or continue security assistance to Israel. 
on january sixteenth twenty twenty four the senate voted seventy two to eleven to table a motion to discharge senate resolution five zero four from the senate foreign relations committee one report which the white house has denied has suggested that the white house is considering whether to slow or pause u s munitions deliveries to israel as leverage for achieving specific u s requests such as israeli cooperation in providing more aid to palestinian civilians humanitarian assistance for palestinians and israel as mentioned above the president's october supplemental budget request includes more than nine billion dollars in humanitarian assistance potentially usable for needs in and around gaza the west bank and israel from the migrants and refugee assistance and international disaster assistance accounts members of congress are debating the scope and conditions under which humanitarian assistance should be appropriated or allocated including with respect to unra in early february twenty twenty four twenty five senators wrote a letter to president Biden urging his administration to work with israel to increase humanitarian aid access to gaza and to investigate employee wrongdoing at unra quote, so that the resumption of u s assistance through unra when appropriate remains possible end quote monitoring u s security assistance for human rights purposes since the israeli defense force began its operations in gaza some critics have accused israel of causing excessive civilian casualties and possible misuse of u s defense equipment biden administration officials also have become more vocal in their call for israeli attentiveness to civilian casualties u s officials also have asserted that israel is making efforts to reduce the number of civilian casualties according to white house national security spokesperson john kirby quote, they've the israelis relied less on air power structured their ground operations in such a way to try to be more targeted and precise i get this all the time that they're ignoring us that they're not listening to us and frankly the facts just don't bear that out End quote. according to one report the united states and israel have set up a bilateral channel to investigate reports of civilian harm noting quote, through the channel which has been active for the last few weeks washington raises with the israelis every specific incident of concern related to israel's military campaign in gaza another u s official said the israelis investigate and provide feedback to the americans in some instances the israelis have conveyed additional information that sheds light on an incident while in others they admitted they made a mistake the official said without specifying which ones End quote one report from mid-december indicated that the biden administration is withholding the delivery of twenty seven thousand m four and m sixteen rifles for israel's national police due to concerns that such armaments may be transferred to civilians under an initiative led by israel's ultranationalist national security minister itamar ben gavir end of section three read by elsie selwyn End of Israel and Hamas Conflict in Brief by Jim Zanotti and Jeremy M. Sharp